Well, what is going on, everybody? It's the Fonz, and we're here for AEW on TNT Review for Fe April the 14th, 2021. And this was a really good show with a couple missteps and a couple things that just made me scratch my head. But other than that, great main event, great opening World Tag Team title match, minus a uh, little thing at the end. But overall, another positive show. Of course, this is the first episode of AEW without any competition from WWE. NXT has moved on to Tuesdays. WWE seems to be so happy about that, touting their success in the ratings and everything else. So, good on a on them. Good on WWE. They have themselves a new spot for the show. So, tonight, of course, we had the tag team titles on the line as Pac and Phoenix, who won the Battle Royal at Revolution to... Decide who's going to face the Young Bucks next. Got their title shot tonight. And in our main event, we had Darby Allin taking on Matt Hardy. Falls counts anywhere. So, we started off with... Before we started that, the Young Bucks are like telling us why they did what they did last week. In a pre-tape promo. They chose friendship. Over everything else, thanks Moxley for pushing them over the edge. Says they are family and finally understand what Don Callis was telling them. They haven't been the same and let others change the narrative on them. Matt says maybe it's time to show them a newer and better version of them as we see the old gear getting clipped up. So no more tassels, no more good goody two-shoe young bucks. They are 100% heel. I know last year going into the match with the um, FTR before they won the tag team titles, they couldn't decide if they wanted to be a heel or babyface team. They kept doing heelish things, but they still wanted. To, they still came out of the babyface side. But here we are. We have ourselves a tag team title match. Before that, also we had Mike Tyson hyping up tonight's um, match that he is a special enforcer of. When MJF comes up, tries to buy him off to you know help him help his boy win the match, and Tyson just says fuck no, get the hell out of here. So we have the Young Bucks versus Phoenix and Pac for the AEW World Tag Team Titles. And if I told you this was a terrible match, I'd be lying to you. This was a fantastic match. This just shows you why AEW has the deepest roster for the tag team division. They have an overflowing roster of the tag team of tag team wrestling. The only reason that Pac and Phoenix are a tag team is because I believe when they came up with all this, though they put Pentagon in the um, face of the Revolution ladder match, and I think I think they should have had Pac or like the Death Triangle, like Pac, like the Lucha Bros get the tag team titles, but whatever. And Pac could have been in there. Didn't matter. Neither one was gonna win. But you had some great wrestling. Phoenix again showing you why this motherfucker needs to be challenging for the world championship by the end of the year. 100%. He should be... If Phoenix doesn't get a... I don't even care if it's, a, if it's a token title reign that lasts maybe a month. Maybe he's a transitional champion. I don't care. This dude needs to have a championship on his own by the end of 2021. It's only April. We have so many more months to go. But Phoenix should be wrestling and challenging for the world title or even the TNT championship by the end of the year. There was a spot where we had double Poison Runners... With, I believe, it was Phoenix on Nick, I believe, and Matt on Pac at the same time. Those two beat the hell out of each other a couple times, too. Phoenix getting thrown over the top. Over the barricade. Jumps up into a super kick. Doesn't sell it with shit, which kind of irks me a little bit when selling's not being done. Rolls through over into a twisting cutter. On the outside, everybody was down. This was just four of the best guys going out there. Kicking ass, taking names, giving us a hell of a match. And then, the finish. Nick ends up hitting low blow on net on a kick on Pack without the ref noticing. Phoenix flies in, scoop a kick in the midair after Pack of course, tags out. He then yanks the mask of Phoenix off, throws it out. Cover, Phoenix, of course, covers his face. Double super kick, one, two, three, and the Young Bucks retain. This is, of course, heel Young Bucks. I didn't think they were going to lose the tag team titles the very next week. I mean, come on. They just turned heel. You don't want to be the first thing they do to be losing the tag team titles. But I don't know who's going to take the titles off of them. But, yeah. 
They Phoenix and Pac gave them one hell of a run. And again, if Phoenix is not wrestling for the world title or the TNT Championship in the near future, you're doing this guy a disservice. I know they want to have him in tag team wrestling. You have the Lucha Bros and everything. But Fe Pac is doing, like, Pac, Phoenix, and Pentagon can all be singles wrestlers. And they've proven it. I mean, hell, Pac, um, not Pac, uh, Pentagon's going to be in a singles match by himself next week. It's time to get this boy, Mr. Phoenix, himself a singles run as well. They can still be Death Triangle, but they should be supporting each other in singles action as we go. Hell of a fucking match. Match of the night by far, in a way. Alex Bavez backstage wants to talk to Hangman Page about him, about dealing with Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. Page says, and like, Page, the, just avoids the question, he's like, now, an update on this guy's shoulder, um, of course, John Silver, who hurt himself a couple weeks ago taking on Darby Allen. Four to six weeks, maybe some um, prayers, vitamins, and a whole bunch of um, egg rolls, I think is what he said. So, and then he says he's got to go do something. He's going to go get some some of those egg rolls. And Marvez, he said he didn't answer Marvez's question. Silver then does some rehab by lifting his arm up slowly as the guys cheer him on. This is obviously foreshadowing that AEW is going in that direction with Hangman Adam Page. He is ranked number one in the men's division for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. And they're, they're just they're, they're biding their time. They're pushing this as far as they can. I don't know if this guy, if Page, I don't know if it's going to be Kenny Omega and Hangman Page at Double or Nothing. They might try to pull this out until... Um, all out, but yeah, they're, they're slowly planting the seeds of Hangman Adam Page taking on, taking on Kenny Omega in the near future. When that future is going to be, I couldn't tell you, but yeah, definitely is where they're going for because he immediately just stopped. He didn't, he didn't answer it. He didn't even acknowledge the question. It was like the question didn't even exist. So... Yeah, there's that. Marvez again backstage with Tyson and um, Chris Jericho in the inner circle and talks about Tyson and Chris Jericho were rivals before. But Jericho said the reason they're not anymore is that after getting beat up by the Pinnacle, he wanted to make an apology to some people that they've ha have wronged. Jericho says Tyson was one of the first people he called. He says going back 10 years, they have been in each other's throats. Tyson told him if Jericho needed him, he'll have his back tonight. He's a special enforcer for Jericho versus Harwood. Jericho tells Tyson he doesn't want any special favors and wants to call it down the middle. Tyson says he does, he's not taking any sides and will call it down the middle. He says, may the best man win and they shake hands. And that is that. So... It looks like Tyson is just on. Tyson and Jericho have mended fences, water on the bridge, all that um, stuff. Even though Jericho did mention in the, in the interview that he still remembers that punch from 10, 11 years ago. It was 2010. So, yeah, 11 years ago ish. Then, oh, then. We had Jay Cargill versus Red Velvet. That AEW has been pushing Jay Cargill to be. This the next big thing. She's supposed to be the female Brock Lesnar who comes in. I'm not talking about Brock Lesnar 2012 to now. I'm talking about 2002 to 2004. Where she's getting all the pyro. She's getting all the hype. She's getting all this stuff. And she doesn't fucking impress me one goddamn bit. This match sucked. Red Velvet is not known as being a someone who can carry a match. And Jay Cargill, four matches in. Okay. Hasn't done a damn thing to impress me. She honestly looks like somebody who's just took a bunch of steroids, got fucking Cody Rhodes um, coaching boner hard, and got her on TV. This woman should not be on na on national television right now. She's nowhere near close to being ready for this. Put her on dark. Put her on elevation. Keep her there until she's ready. She's just not there yet. I don't care what Cody had, what what like what Cody's trying to do. No, she shouldn't have had her debut match on TNT as being the first match of her career. Just no, it shouldn't have happened. So Red Velvet and her had this match. It wasn't very good. A very sloppy delayed vertical suplex by Jay Cargill, which didn't look good at all. Her kip up looked terrible. 
Velvet win, um, Vel, um, Cargill wins with the, whatever the fuck they're calling her finisher, which is the Glam Slam, and that is that. I don't want to talk about it, this, um, garbage anymore. She's not impressive. She looks like someone who's just been hopped up on steroids and they're trying to get over. Backstage, Tony Schiavone with Britt Baker. Britt Baker looks over the AEW rankings at number three. She talk, notes that Red, Red, Red Velvet just locked, so she has to get more. Has, she has two more wins, so that only logical is she'll be number two spot after this. So she'll be on Dark Elevation on Monday. Okay, so I know they're trying to get Dark Elevation as I hype Dark, Dark Elevation up by using Britt Baker, but here's the thing: you have I don't remember. I think it was a match later on where you have. Um, Excalibur talking about how this, like, an individual wrestler has, is, like, number five, like, number four in the rankings. They've won a lot of matches on Dark Elevation, Dark or Dark Elevation. I'm like, who cares? You're not beating anybody. Oh, was, that's right, it was Red Velvet. Talking about how Red Velvet has this, like, five, before she lost, had, like, this 5-0 and record over the last, over this, she, over the last five years, over the last five, over her last five wins on Dark. And I'm like, who cares? You're not fighting anybody on Dark that's really worth anything. All the matches, on, most of the matches on Dark and Dark Elevations are two, three-minute squash matches, and that's it. I'm supposed to be impressed? Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck me for being somebody who expected better for this. When everybody was criticizing the um, ranking system back in 2019, Cody is like, prominent mat wins matter. Who the fuck has Britt Baker won? Lo- beat. By the way, wasn't Thunder Rosa the one who won against Britt Baker back at um, that s- back a couple weeks ago? Wasn't Thunder Rosa the one who won that match? Won a very prominent main event match? Why isn't she number one or number two? Huh? Why is she not number one or number two? Why is she? Why is Britt Baker up so high if she lost such a high prominent match to Thunder Rosa? May I ask? I don't. F- I don't. I don't fucking get it. Like, there's nothing you can say or do that's going to convince me that these rankings fucking matter. All they care about is you know, like the, the rankings don't matter. They have never fucking mattered. We've had so many matches. Like, Darby Allen last year got a world title match against John Moxley being the fifth ranked in the rankings. How is that a... How, how does that make any fucking sense? Oh, that's right, it doesn't. It's just because Tony Khan wanted to see that match. And it's like, that doesn't make... that that That's bullshit. And then, of course, last week you had... You had Britt Baker herself bury this ranking system. So why the hell should I care about the ranking system... When you have Britt Baker, one of the worst wrestlers you have on your brand that you're pushing to the fucking moon for no goddamn reason, is out there burying this thing. It just, and honestly, it just doesn't make any sense. I'm trying to find the rankings here on their Twitter page, but I have to go back so fucking far, don't I? Unless they're not putting them on the Twitter page anymore. But yeah, it's just, I, I really don't know why anyone should care. Then we had, oh my god. So last week, they had that nice little promo from QT Marshall and his, uh, and his group. And then this week, we were going to get the uh, debut match of Anthony Agogo. Which, to be fair, I was excited to see what this guy could do. What could Anthony Agogo do for AEW? How good would he be? Little did I know that they were going to do the dumbest fucking finish I think I've seen. So, Anthony Agogo comes out. He has a match with Cole Carter. Kind of figured it was going to be somebody who didn't matter. It was going to be somebody who didn't matter. So, why in the hell did Anthony Agogo come out here? He gives one punch. He's one punch man. He's literally one punch man. Because... They, they tangle for a minute, and then Anthony Gogo hits this guy in the gut one time. One time. The guy goes down. The referee calls for the bell. And the match is over. I'm like, what? What is this garbage? Okay, so 
So you have not done anything to like, oh, I punched him in the gut, match is over. That's not impressive. If it would have been a knockout punch to the face, maybe a little bit more impressive. But a punch to the gut, you hit Cody last week or the week before that with a punch to the gut and it didn't knock him out. So I'm supposed to believe this is going to knock this guy out? Okay, going back on the AEW rankings for a second. I have the women's rankings right here for this week. Tay Conti's got a 10-2 and record, which she has a title match coming up next week. Fair enough. Red Velvet's number two. Three is Britt Baker. Four is Nala Rose. Thunder Rose is 7-2, and two, and she's number five. Why is she below Britt Baker when Thunder Rosa won that match? The light, Oh, that's right, because the Lights Out match didn't count. That's fucking dumb. Still doesn't make any sense. Who the fuck has Britt Baker beat to be that high up? Nobody. Beating people on Dark, Dark Elevation? Nah, don't buy it. It doesn't fly with me. Anyway, so yeah. A go go wins. Nobody cares. Then we had Miro talked about Kip Saban since Arcade 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 and Arcade hasn't heard from him. He's moving on with and without him. It puts all the champions on notice that he will be champion eventually. Chris Jericho with Sammy Guevara versus Dax Hardwood with Cash Wheeler. Mike Tyson is the guest enforcer. All other stable members are to be banned. So uh, Tyson's out there looking as casual as can be. You know. Tully Blanchard tried to stay back, but um, Andre was just like, nope, you gotta leave. Only one of you can stay. So, we have the match here. Really good match between these two, Jericho and Dax Hardwood. This is the first time for these two to be in the ring together, if I'm correct. At least as stable, as um, en um, enemy stables. Which, of course, May 5th is going to be Blood and Guts, so I don't expect too much on that card. Other than that one match, because it's going to be on May 5th, which is a Wednesday, of course. Match starts on it. Match is going really good. Jericho grabs a chair, pretty much testing Tyson. And Tyson grabs a chair, takes it away. Dax tries to give him a low five, pulls it away as you know he would. Titan, um, Dax gets the bat. Dax is going to hit Tyson with the bat. I'm not Tyson, but he's going to use the bat, but Tyson pulls it away. Now, during picture in picture, at least twice, Ty um, Dax got into Tyson's face. And was just having an argument back and back with this guy. I don't know what the hell he was thinking. But, of course, towards the end of the match, who's to come down? First, it's MJF in this blue suit. Like, baby blue suit. MJF kicks his way to the ring, arguing. And, of course, the referee gets out, gets <clears throat> out of the way. Of course, Cash gets up. And, of course, everyone, like the rest of the pinnacle comes down. But the inner circle follows behind. They start having a brawl. Cash gets the bat. Is going to do something with it. Get Tyson comes over. Looks like he's going to hit Tyson. But Tyson cold cocks him so hard. I think that he's not getting up again. Jericho. Um, I'm sorry. Dax. Looks like he's going to have Jericho in a powerbomb. Of course, Sammy Guevara, who's allowed at ringside, gets up on the apron. Tells him, come on, man, bring it. Just distract him. Jericho gets out. Judas effect. One, two, three. Jericho is your winner. Now, probably, people are probably going to be like, why did Jericho win with the fact that you want to get this Pinnacles group over? The Pinnacles winning should have no problem winning the, um, the big match. The Blood and Guts is where the Pinnacle is going to get all this down. The Pinnacle is going to be the ones to take the win and just shut up the Inner Circle. So the Inner Circle winning these small matches is not going to do much. But, yeah. So Jericho, after the match, says that... Hey, it's funny because Wheeler is up on Wardlow's shoulders because he's out as they get out of here. Chris Jericho says, while you guys get your pieces of trash out of here, I want to make sure that it's said now that the, that Mike Tyson is an insinuary member of the Inner Circle, and they all do that. So then we have ourselves a promo here, and I actually have this one here, of the Click or the Elite being back together with Don Callis, the Young Bucks, the Good Brothers, and Kenny Omega. Come on. Oh, geez, what is over real quick? Listen, listen. Good Brothers, Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, Don Callis, 
Clearly, you have changed the pro wrestling world again. Would you like a scoop? Here's the scoop. Hit the bricks. Give me the Get microphone. Out of here, Mark Vangler, Try some admission. Dangly. There's some dangling. Get out of here, no dangly, no dangly, no admission. No if dangly, the wrestling sir. world has learned one thing about all of us, what's that? What's that? it's this. Just when you think you've seen it all, you haven't seen anything. You see, when the Young Bucks came back in the fold, the greatest tag team of the last 2,000 years. This is true. When the Young Bucks came back to the family fold, it wasn't the end of the story. It's just the beginning. You know, we're listening to the interwebs, the radios, the podcasts. The people on the telly, they're telling me, why did you change, Kenny? Why did you change, Young Bucks? Why did you change? We never changed. We just got sick of doing what you guys wanted us to do. When we're sick of all you non-sport numbnuts fans wanting us to be just like you. We were never just like you. And from here on in, we're going to be just like us, just like we always were. Because that's where you find the success. And that's why where we go, the gold will follow. God, you guys get me pumped up when you talk like that. Chris, you guys get me so pumped up. Hey, guys, I know this is is fun, right? It's great. But it's not all just fun and games, right? Did you see the performance that we had out there? It's like matches of the years coming out of my damn ears. We're the best tag team in the world, and we are back. AEW Tag Team Division, you've been put on notice. SCU, Best Friends, Butcher and the Blade, I don't care what your damn name is. You want a shot at the Young Bucks? Well, I'll tell you this, guys. You got a BTE trigger with your damn name on it. What a Chris. Because this is what it is. You wanted the old Kenny Omega, you got him. You wanted the old Young Bucks, and by God, you got them, too. So, if you learn one thing, you learn this. Be prepared to be surprised again. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Get him. Whoa. Oh, 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 oh. Got him. Just ribbing on the square. Got him. Just ribbing on the square. Surprise. Right, give it to him. Oh. So Don Callis gives him that little super kick, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'd say that wasn't a bad promo at all. I mean, Don Callis is kind of a sufferable boy. It is what it is. So, yeah, that's what you get for the Young Bucks and everything else. So, we'll see where this goes. Who's going to be, this is the thing, who's going to be the ones to take down this group? Honestly, I'm John Moxley, Kenny, Eddie Kingston definitely going to be in that in that setting. I... I, I don't know who else they got right now. So it's, right now it's just the Bucks and them all feuding with them. John Moxley and them. So the only thing I can think of is maybe Death Triangle. Maybe Death Triangle joins up with Moxley and Eddie Kingston. So bringing them back, like bringing Moxley and them back into a fold for a minute. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how far this goes. It's really interesting to see how far this goes. Then we get a promo from Thunder Rose who says she's taking over the world. She wants both the NWA and AEW Women's Championship and says whoever wins between Sheeta and Conti, she's coming after them. Rose continues with that Serena Deem is missed, but she's coming for the title when she gets back. Well, I'm thinking to myself, well, Thunder Rosa, you had a match against Camille at the NWA's recent pay-per-view. Why didn't you win the champ? Why didn't you win that match? If you really want that title match, that title back, you should have got that title. You should have won that match. Chris Statlander makes her in-ring return with Chuck Taylor, Orange Cassidy, and Trent versus Amber Nova. And uh, Statlander gives everyone the boop, as she does. Now, I'm going to have to say one thing. is I don't know what JR was thinking on this, ma- on this night. He just the entire time was com- commenting on Chris Statlander's look and appearance. I don't know why. I don't know what his deal was. I don't know who, like, someone didn't say in his ear. like, JR, like, enough. I know what I know that you want to like judge people and everything, but this was not something you should have done. All he did was just talk about how she's leaner and fitter and faster, and it's like, dude, she wasn't that bad. Look, she wasn't like she wasn't over obese or anything, or like big, like a big woman when she was um, there before. So why are you gonna sit there and make some kind of stupid comments like that? I'm sure people are gonna sit there and rag on Jr. about it because rightfully so. Plain and simple, rightfully so. Well, it was against uh, uh, Amber Nova, who's not... She's a jobber, pretty much. She didn't get an entrance, so all that stuff. Amber gets maybe a couple hits in here or there, but Chris Statlander 
dominates this thing. She gets the thumbs up from Orange Cassidy. Does a couple running knees, in, running attacks and knees into the um, into Amber Nova in the corner. Flipping senton, roundhouse kicks, supernova modified power driver cover one two three. They called that something else before she got injured. The package power driver that she does. But they now call it the Supernova. So, Chris Stadner in the back. Great to see her back. It's a get for the AEW Women's Division. I was sorely lacking because hopefully somebody backstage will finally get through their head that you have talent in Chris Statlander, Hikaru Shida, Tay Conti, and Thunder Rosa, and others. And Britt Baker can fall down the card where she belongs because Britt Baker does not belong on the card with any of these talented women. Dasha is backstage with Team Taz and asks Taz about if Christian answered his invite. Taz Stark says they shouldn't be waiting so long for an answer because it took months for um, Hobbs to join, but no offense, Hobbs. Taz gets in and says they should keep going as Christian. After Christian tells Stark to hang backstage, he's a little combustible. Brian agrees with him but tells him to also stay backstage as well. Cage seems very confused by this. Taz says just leave it to him, Hook, and Hobbs as they, as they will talk to Christian. Tony Schiavone is in the ring looking to talk to Christian. And let's get that promo running for you as well. Yes, for this time, my friend, what's on your mind? Well, first things first, Tony, this is the first time that you and I have had a chance to do this. This is a huge, huge thrill for me. Well, I gotta you, say. Man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, as you can see, I'm standing out here in my gear, and thankfully, Tony Khan has given me an open contract, and I'm here to exercise that. You know, I've been talking about out work everyone so now hold on let me let me understand this let me understand this so it takes not even like like a full week i don't like get a reply to a text message i don't get a return phone call i offer you christian amazing opportunity to be part of team taz and what do i have to deal with you ignoring me and blowing you, me off you don't even acknowledge me out here what is the deal bro in or out are you in or out Here's the thing, Taz, I was going to do this later on in the back in private like a professional, but since you're out here, listen, you said it yourself, right now Team Taz is a bit of a dumpster fire. And here's the thing, I didn't come to AEW to help you fix your problems, I came to AEW to win championships. So you want my answer? Fine, here it is. And I'm glad you're standing on those three steps so I can say this to you face to face. My answer is no. Oh, yeah. All right, well, here's the deal, shitbag. Okay, as far as my height, if I was standing in my wallet, I'd be 10 feet over your big head. Yeah, that bingo hole money, huh? Yeah, you're dead right. Yeah, no, other money, too. Other money. You just made the biggest mistake of your life not joining our group. You're ungrateful. You're disrespectful. I never liked you. I never liked your stupid buddy that carried your ass. And you have the audacity to wear my colors while you're out here and you turn me down. You have to... This powerhouse Will Hobbs. Our house is stepping up, but... Hook out there. Just so Hobbs enters the ring. They face off. Hook comes from behind to distract Cage. Hobbs tries something. Cage tries to get him into the um, kill switch. Doesn't work. Hobbs beats him down. Smash uh, and then smashes like smashes his face into the steel steps at the end of it. So it looks like Cage. Well, Cage and Hobbs will be facing off against each other next week. The lineup for next week. Hikaru Shida will put her AEW Women's Championship online against Tenora Conti. Tay Conti um, should be a hell of a match. I'm sure Britt Baker will stick her shitty nose in it. Powerhouse Hobbs takes on Christian Cage. Ricky Stokes takes on Hangman Anna Page. Why? I don't fucking know. And Trent takes on Penta El Zio Miyoto. Based off of what happened last week. So, the weaving all this in. Which is why it's one of the, like, I said earlier that I figured that the only thing I could see for the Kenny Omega, the people taking down Kenny Omega and his group is John Moxie, Eddie Kingston, and Death Triangle. But it looks like Death Triangle might have their hands full with the best friends for now. I don't know. Then we go into the AEW TNT Championship match. Derby Allen takes on Matt Hardy. Balls count anywhere. No disqualification. Matt Hardy told his, his 
um, how his office, or his group, to stay in the back. He wants to do this on his own. Would that last? Of course not. No staying anywhere to talk about. No dark order. Nobody to start out this match. Now, if the, Matt Hardy was to win the match and win the title, would have been a perfect way to get the title off of Darby Allen and move it on to somebody in the dark order. Did that happen? No. Matt Hardy did not win, but Darby Allen did. We got a lot of running, which this is something that's got to stop soon. Like, we see it all the time. Darby, like, until, like, we. Are, this is what's interesting. You have a faction war between the Pinnacle and the Inner Circle, which is, what's, which is the more important one. You also have a faction war between Matt Hardy's group and the Dark Order. Do we really need to have two factions, two faction wars going on at the same time? Uh, I, I, I just don't, I don't know why you have to do this, but it is what it is. So, Matt Hardy, Darby Allen beating the hell out of each other. In comes the, um, the House Hardy. They start beating up on Darby Allen. Darby Allen, like, like Darby Allen, pretty much dead. Out come the Dark Order because they they're gonna do something too. They stop him. Sting comes down. He takes kind of the private party. It looked like I am um, Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page were gonna do something. Lance Archer shows up, stops them. They leave because they know let's not fuck with this big guy because he could kick our ass. So he gets in the ring, says something to Sting, goes over, grabs Isaiah Cassidy. Puts him and nails the blackout on him. Goes after him, beats up on Mark Quinn, takes both of these guys out of here. Pretty much, Dark Order has cleared everybody else out. Matt Hardy and Darby Allen up on the stage. Sting throws the bat to Darby Allen and leaves. Okay. Darby Allen gets, goes for the attack, gets hit with a low blow. Matt Hardy. Um. Matt Hardy then takes him and throws him into the backstage area. They fight through. They, he beats him up in there. Clears off one of the tables that Tony Khan and Co were using. They put the. They put the. He puts him on the table. Put has a ladder set up. Leg drops through the ladder through the ta- on the off the ladder through the table. One two kick out. Matt Hardy throws him around the other side through the other entrance way. So they brawl some more. Matt Hardy. Then gets hit with a low blow after Darby Allen then go gets the bat. Hits him a couple times with the bat. Tells the announcers to get the hell out of the way. They all get up. He destroy he attacks some of these monitors they're using, so I know those are gonna have to be replaced. Clears it out, puts Matt Hardy on there, hits him in the throat or in the face with the bat, climbs up, like goes around, goes to the metal trust or whatever it is, that little metal tower behind it. And coffin drops off of that onto Matt Hardy. One, two, three. Darby Allen retains the TNT Championship in a brutal falls count anywhere match that was exciting. It was fun, and it was a great time. So AEW just cooking on all cylinders. It is the first time that they do not have any competition against AEW. It's going to be interesting to see how well this does. But again. Next week's going to be interesting, too, with the fact that Hikaru Shida is putting the Women's Championship on the line. Cage versus Hobbs. Page versus Starks. And Trenton versus Penta M. Should be a good show, I'm sure. They'll be in, that's only four matches, and I know they have a lot more. They have more time compared to that. So I expect at least one or two more matches or one match in one, more, in one segment to be added during the week. But yeah, AW, good show tonight. Like I said, way better ending this week. Way better match to end this week than last week's show. I don't... Like, I'll, we'll see where they go with the... Like, if we get a group of guys to take on Kenny Omega and his group, we're going to have three faction wars going on at the same fucking time. That's too much. Just way too much. But that is your AEW on TNT Review. Hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Find me on Twitter at, at Minds at the France Club. Find me on twitch.tv slash the France Club. And find me on Instagram at the France Club. And I will see you guys on Friday for SmackDown. The Fallout for WrestleMania SmackDown. Until then, my name is the France, and I'll see you guys later.